All right, we're here working on the Tutankham control panel. These are all the old joysticks and buttons and everything off of the converted control panel that had been converted to Avengers. And there is the new CPO from this old game. It's all laser cut and plexi and ready to go. So I just gotta get everything kind of cleaned up and back in place and we'll be in business. Now, uh, the original converted control panel did have some leaf switch uh, joysticks here as well as some leaf buttons that I'm all going to be able to reuse and everything's been converted to jam on inside the cabinet but let's go outside and take a look at the cabinet so we're in the garage it's hot as heck out there I'm here working on a uh, friend's punch-out cabinet uh, getting that done but here is the Tutankham cabinet I've got the monitor back in I have the coin door back in. We clean the coin door up a little bit. And just in case anybody here is wondering how to get this chrome piece off, it's actually really easy to do. There are two screws you need to undo. This one on the outside and this one on the other far side. Take those two off and this chrome piece here pops off and you can clean it up and do whatever you want to do with it. Something I might get in the future if it bothers me enough is a new stern coin door sticker but for now we're in good shape I did respray this cabinet I had made a video prior and then deleted it so I resprayed everything because I was not happy with the finish I'm happy with the finish now and then I did do the upgraded side art from this old game and I really like it so that was kind of my incentive to respray the sides and now I got rid of all that uh, kind of that you know a little fur if you will on the wood grain and it's all gone now you can still see a little bit of wood grain but this is much better and then here is the side art there looks nice and the other side also you know that looks pretty good too and yes yes i'm working on the shooting master but i gotta figure out the monitor it's i've gone through and replaced a bunch of things on it and it's still not quite working where I, the way i want it to but Here's the other side. And now all I need to do is just kind of finish up the control panel. I've got a JAMA to, well, Konami to JAMA adapter coming that we're going to use for the Tutankham board because the original harness in this was gone and I'm using a JAMA harness now. So that's in there. And now it's just a matter of finishing up this control panel. So let's go over here and we'll take a quick look. I did go ahead and strip all the old Avengers artwork off here and they've kind of Swiss cheesed it but this is salvageable um, they had the recessed areas here for the dust covers of the joystick so we'll put those back in there and you can kind of see you know what they did for some of the buttons and where there were a couple buttons here for the leaf switch buttons originally and there's some T-molding here it, I do have some adhesive kind of left on here. I'm going to sand this all down and make it nice and smooth. And then we'll go ahead and put it on. But let's just take a look at the underside. It did have the recessed places for the joysticks as well. And it's kind of nice that everything is still here. They didn't fill it. I've got had other control panels that have been filled. So I don't have to knock anything out. I don't think I'm going to go ahead and fill the holes because it does have a plexi overlay. If it didn't have a plexi overlay, I probably would have gone ahead and filled things. But because it's got a plexi overlay, I'm not going to take the time to do it. Uh, it also kind of tells a little bit of a story the way it's gone through as far as, oh yeah, it's, you know, it was well, a Tutankham, then it was converted, then now it was actually converted back. So that's good to know. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start sanding this. And then hopefully we can start putting the control panel together. All right, I've just come back inside from the hot garage that I swear probably is like 100 degrees right now. I've got this all sanded down with all, all the adhesive removed. If there's any other couple pieces as I find them, I'll just remove it. But otherwise, this feels nice and smooth. There's the old control panel overlay that was there that we had removed. And they actually put a piece of plexi over it because they knew that there was going to be other holes underneath. So that kind of protected it from the other holes that were there. And the next thing to do ahead, go ahead and do is to reassemble everything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start doing that. All right, so we're working on the control panel. And one thing I'm going to do before I reassemble it all is just clean up these joysticks here. Now, 
If you guys take a look at this, they're not, it's not the cleanest looking joystick. You know, it could afford to be replaced, but I'm not going to replace it. We're going to keep it. You know, it's got some rust up here and it could overall be better. But one thing you can do to quickly and easily just kind of clean these up is, especially if it's far from perfect, you could take it, put it in your drill as if it were a drill bit. Okay, and then we're just going to take the scotch Bright pad uh, here and we're going to wrap it around and let it do its thing. So let's see if we can get a good look here. I'm going to move the camera so we can see it in the better light. We got some rust here, we got some pitting and some rust up here, and I think this will clean it up and put it in decent shape. So let's go ahead and we'll do that real quick. So just wrap it around and let it go. I'd say that looks better. It looks better already. And the thing I might do next is I might come in with some Brasso and a paper towel and we'll do the same thing real quick. Let's see if we can hit it one more time, get it get up there. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all. A lot better. Okay, I'm gonna go get some Brasso and we'll just put that on as well, kind of protect the joystick a little bit there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Brasso on a paper towel here and we'll do the same thing. That'll be more than enough. And there's some more junk off of that. Let's take the clean part of the paper towel and we'll wipe it off. I'd say that's almost as good as new. As good as used. Let's go with that. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and I'll finish up the other joystick and we'll start putting things back together. Now one thing I just tried, I tried polishing the tops of the joystick here. Yes, I tried having shiny balls, polishing them anyway. And I think it worked a little bit. I just used some car polish, not wax, just polish. And the way I can tell it worked a little bit, this has a little bit deeper of a shine. It's kind of hard to tell, I'll zoom in. And when you look at the reflection of the light, which is a little white shiny spot there, this one tends to be just a little bit sharper, not by much, but you know, I don't know if you guys can see that, but this light here, that reflection is just a little bit crisper than that one. So I'm going to polish, a, I po finish, just polish this one. I'm going to polish this one and I'm just using regular old car polish here and I, you know, wiped it off. I didn't do it for very long, you know, not even a minute. I'm just using some old... Meguiar's car polish that's probably, I don't know, 10 years old or something, maybe more, probably more. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the other one, I'll show you what I do. So I just put a little bit on here, you don't need much at all, just a little dab, okay, and spread it around there on the paper towel. You should probably use microfiber cloth, but you know what? These joysticks, they're far from perfect. So 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing, but we'll just do it on the top of the ball there. Alright, that's plenty warm enough, and then we'll just go ahead and kind of buff the stuff off. It feels smoother already, too. I'd say that made a little bit of a difference. You know, for that, you know, 30 seconds or so that it took, I'd say it was worth it. But, alright, now let's go ahead and, now we're going to go ahead and finish assembling the control panel. Okay, I apologize. I've actually gone ahead and done some of this off camera. I was sitting at the kitchen table working on this and my wife was there and she has no idea that I sit around and film myself being awkward. So, let me go ahead and tell you what I've done so far. So this is the This Old Game control panel overlay. It's plexi and all the holes on it are laser cut. Okay, let's just let's kind of take a quick close-up of it. The quality of this is awesome. Uh, a lot better than anything else I've ever seen out there. Uh, you can even read all the instructions, clear as day, which is nice. And there you go. So I would say that, you know, I don't have an original one to compare it to, but I would say this is just as nice. Probably minus all the cigarette burns that they probably would have had. So there you go. That's the control panel overlay. It's plexi. Um, and one thing you do need to remember to do before you actually put bolt this on, I've done and I've put the joystick bases in, I've put the buttons in, but I haven't done any switches or anything yet. I've kind of just left everything that was there from before. But before you put the joist, the overlay on, you want to make sure you put your dust covers in. You want to put them underneath. Okay, they're right here. You want to make sure you put them underneath the overlay because if you remember from one of the previous shots, it's actually routed out for that dust cover. So don't put it on top and ruin your nice, beautiful control panel overlay. So let's go ahead and we'll flip it over. But here are the, um, the joysticks that were polished. And we can see there, I mean, this, this looks a lot better than it did. This was all kind of rusty before and we polished it and used some Brasso on it and uh, 3M scotch right pad, basically. I'm not sure that's probably the brand name, but eh, it is what it is. But this looks a lot better, and now you can actually... See, I can see the reflection of the light. Both both bulbs in there, if I get it to focus just right. But anyway, that's besides the point. It's just a joystick, you're not going to see it anyway once your hands are on it. Uh, I did go ahead and paint all of my carriage bolts black. I did not leave them the way they were. They had surface rust on them. You know, I hit each one of them with the scotch Bright pad as well. And some sandpaper when needed, then painted them all with satin black. Let's go ahead and flip it over and we can see the Swiss cheese that is here. Okay, so this is kind of where everything is sitting. Now, I, I may at some point in time make another control panel. Um, this would be pretty easy to copy. It's just MDF. It has some routed sections for the joysticks. Okay. It also had the routed area for the dust covers on the front. And it has a couple of bevel cuts on it. One for the T-molding and one for the back. So this would be, I think, relatively simple enough to copy if we needed to. Um, but I did not go ahead and fill all the holes and I'm going to tell you my reasoning why. First of all, that takes time. Second of all, it tells a story as to, hey, you know what, this was converted at one point in time and now converted back. And third of all, when it was converted, they didn't fill any of the holes from before. All they did was slap a piece of plexi on the top and call it a day. So yes, I could go ahead and do that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it as is because I've actually come across control panels that have been patched but after they were converted so then I gotta go ahead and you know you gotta knock everything out now I'm not saying I'm gonna convert this back to Avengers by any means but 
it does tell itself a little story. It says, hey, you know what? This was not always a Tutankhamun, especially when you look at the original monitor I've got. It has Tutankhamun burning and Avengers burning on it. So, it is what it is. There are a couple nice things, though, about the holes that are left here. Uh, I can see what they used for switches. Now, I have two styles of switches, leaf switches here. I've got the ones here with, you know, the white riser on it. And I also have these other ones here that are just the black leaf switches. And then they have little spacers that go on the bottom. Well, if you look where all the old, the current buttons are, the current being the Tutankham buttons, they've got one, two, three buttons. That's it. And if we look, we have nice, neat, let me zoom in here. We've got nice, neat holes for where the leaf switches were. Okay. So we've got our three buttons, one, two, three, and then we also have a nice, neat set of uh, holes here for the old leaf switches. There's two, another two, another two. So I'll be able to set this up pretty darn close to the way it was. Minus all the other Swiss cheese uh, happenings that have happened. But... It is, it does tell itself a little story. And you can see where they drilled in. See, these were not straight here. And there's another one here that was also not straight. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start attaching the leaf switches and we'll figure out the wiring as needed. And I'll have to kind of come back and recap because the battery is going to die. Let me go recharge that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I finished up the control panel while the battery was charging. This is what it looks like. Now we'll flip it over and we'll take a look and see what I did or did not do on the back side here. But this is what the front looks like with the joysticks in. Looks pretty good. And we've got the dust covers underneath the control panel as we should. All right, let's flip it over and take a look. So everything is in place, but I haven't gone through and checked all the wiring to make sure everything's going to line up as far as the jam adapter goes and that harness. So I'm going to probably do that when this is in the cab. And all of these wires are still loose. They still need to clean them up and tie them up and whatnot. I left most of the ground wires that were already there and I did not fill any of the holes because uh, everything felt pretty good. So we'll kind of monitor it over time and uh, if I feel like some sections are getting weaked in we'll think about filling holes and whatnot. But for now I'm going to leave it because it tells a little bit of a story of what this game has gone through. Uh, something they did that was interesting I thought was the way they did the ground wires. Now I have seen things daisy chained all the way around before, that's nothing new, but they just used a hard metal non-coated wire like this. So we'll just need to make sure that this is not actually touching anything that could short out, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Um, and we will go through and I tested everything, continuity was good, I did have to add a couple wires in, but I'm gonna leave it tells the story and everything's working and it saves me a lot of time as well time is key right now but otherwise this is pretty much left just the way I had gotten it who I don't know let's see almost 20 years ago probably um, the only thing that's changed is I've added a couple wires and put things back where they belong I did have to put these spacers underneath here on the leaf switches and let me show you I've got an extra one here this is what the leaf switch looks, uh, the spacer looks like. This one on the bottom of the leaf switch. And the leaf switch sat on top of it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and we'll tidy up the wires and then figure out where everything goes on here. We'll move pins if we need to. I removed any excess buttons. And we're good. I think I pulled off, uh, I don't know, three or four buttons. But... That is that. So now what we're going to do is take this over to the game and see if we can get everything lined up as far as the layout goes. I will print off a schematic for Tutankham and then I will double check that with the JAMA because we're using a JAMA adapter to do it. Okay, we're in the garage. Now I brought the control panel in after finishing it up. It's time to figure out where all the controls are going to and what needs to be fixed, not fixed, etc. I got out the old game board I picked up probably, geez, over a year ago now. And I got my adapter in today from highscoresaves.com. And so this board, just so you guys know, it needs negative 5 volts to run. Uh, my JAMA adapter 
had the, has the jumper in, but you know my cheap JAMA harness that I installed in this probably a year and a half, two years ago, does not have a line for the negative five. So I actually had to tap into the edge connector and add negative five volts. When you don't have negative five volts going, the board will just flash multiple different colors and not do anything. So that is important to have. Let me show you here, let's see. So here we go. There is the JAMA adapter from High Score Saves. They did a nice job with that. And then the cheap JAMA harness there. And here is the board itself. A little dusty, but it's working at the moment, so we're going to leave it the way it is. Uh, normally I clean everything. For whatever reason, I didn't clean this one. Not quite sure why. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and test the controls. I've got the dip switch settings on free play, but apparently High Score Saves also has a kit that I might need to get because when you put the dip switch settings on for free play, which is, you know, that, I need more hands, is the dip switch furthest away from me, so right there. Put all four of them up and to on rather, and then you end up with a static screen for Tutankham. So it stays like that for one or two players, it doesn't go anywhere. <sighs> I don't want to leave it like that. Um, I like to see the attract visuals and I don't want to get any more burning on this monitor even though it has some already. No big deal. But this is fine for now because we're going to test the controls and see what does what. When I first turned this game on, I had the attract sound on. This thing was loud. It was just so happy to be playing again in its original cabinet. But all right, let's go ahead and test. First, we're gonna test the player one button and make sure it actually works. It does, okay, here we go. Up makes me go right, down makes me go left. Okay, yeah, we're gonna die a lot. So let's, so. Right is left. No, right's not left. I mean, it went left, but... Left is up, right is down. I guess we have some automatic things that happen if you're in a certain area. So, left is up, right is down. Okay. We're going to have a game over here. Yep, game over. Okay. Now we'll try the player two button. Okay, so let's see, can I fire? Can I fire? No, I'm not firing. I'm just dying. No, I am not firing at all. Okay, uh, flash. That doesn't do anything either. Okay, so I need to focus on this side of the control panel because they're not connected. Right? So we're gonna go ahead and we'll spend some time figuring that out. We know these two are good and we need to fix these because left is up, right is down, and everything else is flip-flopped. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next. We're just going to take pins out and rearrange them on the control panel so we know where everything is supposed to go. But we're also going to need to take a look at the JAMA adapter and the original pin out to make sure things are lining up as they should. Because even though this has two joysticks, I don't know if this is necessarily considered a player two joystick within the game. And it died again. We died. We died. Uh, I capped this monitor, but I still have a little curl here. I'm going to see if I can adjust it out but there we go back to that static screen all right so i finished up the wiring i needed to use a different konami to jam adapter i was using the high score saves but i decided to use the ian kellogg because that actually has the trace that is needed to go from i think it's like pin 12 to what is needed for the flash button so i did have to add wire into this jam harness because I had cut it. It's on the button three here, wire in the back. So that's there. Um, and that pin is activated with a dip switch that Ian had put in for track and field. And you could have done it on the high score saves one as well. You just would have needed to run a jumper wire and they did put through holes there 
for you to do that. I didn't feel like doing that, so I just decided to do this. But I did get all the buttons sorted out and everything is working at the moment. The only other thing I need to do is make sure I get some voltage up here from my lights, but otherwise this thing is done and working. And the next, I did go ahead and clean up the back side here with all the wires, so it's a little bit cleaner there. We'll put that thing on and we're gonna get this game into the basement. And I will probably adjust the monitor once it's in because the light in here is daylight, bright shop lights. But there you go. We are almost there. It is almost completely in. I'm going to secure the board to this here and this slides in and out, which is very nice. We're good to go. And yeah, just in case you're wondering, that's the old harness back there for the Avengers. For some odd reason, I keep thinking I'm gonna put Avengers back in, but I'm not. I should just take that out. All right. Let's tidy this up and get it in the basement. All right, this is it. We're about to take a ride on the Super Dolly 2000 over there. It's all done. I could still clean up some wiring and whatnot, but it's going to be good for now. I want to get it in the basement so we can play it. There you go. We've got the marquee there. That's an original marquee. And there is the reproduction control panel overlay. Got our stern coin door and everything with the upgraded side art. Everything's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna tip it back onto Super Dolly 2000 here and we're gonna roll it down the hill and get it into the basement. The one thing I might do is get some tinted glass for this because I believe this should have been tinted but the original one that I had was clear. So we're gonna do tinted, it'll hide that plastic monitor bezel and some of that lovely burning that we've got there. But for all intents and purposes, this is done. I'm gonna dial in the monitor once we get in the basement but we're gonna call this thing a wrap and hopefully that gypsy moth that's lying around doesn't come in with us. All right, let's load it up. All right, Tutankhamun is all loaded up, looking like a mummy here on the Super Dolly 2000. We're gonna roll it down the hill and put it in the tomb. All right, time for the ride. Here we go, into the tomb, or the basement. All right, the game is down here in the basement amongst everything else here. So there's the Robotron Mini we're working on, and it's gonna go in this spot over here next to Super Basketball and Donkey Kong 3 for now. I'm literally, I'm working on tons of things. There's my Robotron Mini and uh, prototype bezel. This is just a cardboard one for the monitor. And we've got the NBA Fast Break over here, and the Rescue 911, and I've taken some parts off the make tracks to go get reproduced. It's been busy. The red tent squished over here so I could get the game in because I had it stored in front of the door. I'm a mess. Scramble's here. Something's got to leave. Probably going to be Scramble, is my guess. But here is the Tutankhamen. It's in the basement. We're going to spin it around, slide it over here, and... Put it in that spot over there between Arena and Super Basketball so we can see the side art. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it in and get it plugged in and we'll turn it on and see how everything looks. And then I'll probably fuss around and adjust the monitor after this video is done. But there we go. We'll put it in its place. All right, Tutankham is in the location where it's going to sit for a little while. There we go, we've got, you can see the side art, at least on this side when we're next to Arena. Let's go ahead, we're going to turn it on. I didn't plug it up to the master switch yet, so I can just kind of flip it on and we can watch this game go. So I'm going to go ahead and let's turn it on. And then we will play a game and see how bad we are. If I can find the switch. Somewhere, somewhere up there. There we go. We're loading. We are loading. We're coming on. Our key is on. There we go. All right, let me go hit the lights and we'll play around. Before we play, let's take a quick look at the controls here. We've got 
our directional here, which moves us up, down, left, and right. And then we've got our player one, player two buttons, and the flash button, which will clear everything off of the screen at once. And then our fire control, except we can only fire either left or right. We cannot go up and down, although I need to get, I think, a restrictor plate or something so that I can only go left and right because this joystick still moves up and down. It's going to be very misleading if you can move it up and down. But I will get that at some point and take care of that. But those are the controls for this game. Uh, let's play a game and see how hard this game is. All right, here we go. Don't mind the monitor curl I've got on the side. You'll see once we start. It turns out that my cap kit didn't quite fix that, but eh, let's go ahead and just play a game anyway. So here we go. We've got these snakes coming. We can only shoot left and right. The vultures try to get us as well. Those little bats are fast. So we need to get keys to open doors, and then we'll go through this little teleporter here, come out the other side. We'll try to get some points. And this guy follows us. The AI in here can be a little ruthless. It wants to follow you. Ugh. That was dumb. Alright, let's go. Let's move on. Whew, that was close. We need some points. Yeah, let's go. Oh, are you kidding me? You know, I really wish I could shoot up and down. We're going to play a few rounds here, I think, tonight. Oh, this is embarrassing. I should be able to clear this level. Ah, good. That was a junk run anyway. All right, let's do it again. Go, go, go! Jeez. I don't need to get that little ring there, but I want that ring. Got him. Alright. Now I've got a door open. I haven't beaten this one yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, I fired, I swear. Woo, go, 
go, go, go, go, go. Woo! Okay, so we need to get another key to actually advance anywhere. We need another key. Ah, I need that key. I'll go get that key now. Jeez, why don't I flash? I should hit the flash. Ah, oh, I should have hit the flash button. I need to hit the flash button when I do this. What? No, my name does not start with a Z. One more time? One more time? This is how the arcades get you. Hmm. Okay. All right, one more time, and then we're gonna stop there and end this video and call Tutankham done. Got lucky there. Woo! We gonna make it without dying? We did! <laughs> we made it without dying. This is good, because I will die here a lot. Lucky, lucky. We're getting better at this. These guys are ruthless, those bats. I can't use that key yet, darn it. No! No, no! Woo! Ah. I had that too. You know, it's like I don't die on the first one, but then I end up dying multiple times here. Just hit the flash button, Tim. Okay, flash button. Remember that. Hit the flash button. Go, 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 go! <laughs> it's 
they need the other key for over here. 4,000 points for that. Wow, they're brutal. Jeez. Flash button. Too late. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So there's Tutankham, hard as heck, but kind of addicting. Uh, I like it. Um, I, I find myself really wanting to keep going. I could keep doing this with you guys for a lot longer. But I won't do that to you because I know how exciting this is. But maybe we'll do it again sometime. If you guys really want to see me play some more and not do very well, you let me know and we'll do that. See, I did do better than last time. All right, guys, that wraps up this video for Tutankham. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know, and I will get to them as I can. Um, and uh, thank you again for watching. It's much appreciated. Hopefully you guys found this useful and got something out of it. All right, guys, take it easy.